Hello dear students, hope you all are fine. As you have received your computer textbooks, so we start with the syllabus. Today we are going to study lesson number one that is computer system. Okay. The functions and components of a computer. The computer has both hardware and software components. If we talk about a computer, computer as a whole consists of hardware parts also and software parts also. The hardware consists of mechanical and electronic devices which we can see and touch. Hardware parts are the which mechanical parts or the solid parts which we can see and touch right as we have a cpu the cd the drive the keyboard the mouse all these are termed as hardware the software consists of programs like the operating system and the application programs for specific task now can you see a software software are the programs which we have this is an operating system. Microsoft Windows is an operating system which we cannot touch, right? It is there in the computer by which we can start our computer. Here I have MS Word. This is also an application program which is again termed as software. I have antivirus again comes in the field of softwares, okay? So we have hardware and software, both we term it as a computer system. The computer mainly performs the following four functions. Now, what are the four functions in the computer? What it does? Receives input. Yes. The user, what he wants, that is termed as input. The input from the user is processed okay in the cpu and then the output is given but if the user wants to store something or save something then the input is given to the processing unit and the processing unit will store the data in the storage media okay so either or he can perform so his Instructions can go as the output, as the display, or I can store it in the memory. So, four functions are receives input, process information, stores information, and produces the output. Receives input, processes information, stores information, and produces the output. The computer system includes all the hardware and software required to make it functional for the user. Now here, for input, I require certain input units. For output, I require certain hardware. Okay, either it would be a monitor on which I can see or a printer on uh, a paper, I can get the information, right? Processing is done by the software. Storage is also done, can be hardware and software it stores in the RAM okay so both hardware and software are required to do all these four functions next part types of computer system there are different types of computer system microcomputer microcomputer is a program with a microprocessor as a central processing unit okay can you see a microcomputer can you see the microcomputer microcomputer is broken down into two personal computers and workstations personal computers a personal computer is a microcomputer designed to be used by a single person okay one person can use this personal computer 
These machines run on easy to use applications such as Word, processors and spreadsheets. So whatever that person requires for his work, then he can use that particular application softwares in his computer. Okay, that is known as personal computer. Workstation. Workstations are expensive and powerful machines used by engineers, scientists and other work professionals who process a lot of data. Can you see her? She is also a profes professional. Okay, so her job is for weather forecasting. So she requires workstations. A lot of data has to be processed for getting the weather requirements. Okay, the weather processing. People who need to run complex programs and display the result graphically use workstations. Can you see graphs are being displayed on the screen? Right? So, these kind of workstations are used by the people who will be working with complex programs and the ones who require graphical structures. Okay, so we have two parts or two examples for microcomputer, personal computer which has been used by a single person. Okay, and the workstation which is used for professionals. Next part, there are portable computers also. What do you mean by portable computers? The computers, if I want to uh, shift my house, okay, so I need to take care of my computer. I need to take a uh, shift the monitor, the CPU, and then the printer, the scanner, all these devices, okay. So I can't do the shifting now and then because it's very heavy to just take it anywhere, right? So, if we are a traveling person and I need to go abroad or to other areas with my computer, then it comes for a portable computer. The computer which I can quickly grab and go, okay? Those are kind of portable computers. First portable is laptop pc laptop is very lightweight rather than a desktop okay so i can uh, put that in my backpack and i can go anywhere laptops are battery powered so it's not necessarily that i should be plugged my wire should be plugged in not necessary it works on the battery also these computers are ideal for users who are traveling and work on field away from their offices, right? The ones who are away from the offices but still has to work and has to do certain things on the computer. Then for them, it is very useful that they get a laptop. Nowadays, many, many people are having their work done on the laptops only. Many companies are uh, keeping their um, employees work from home, right? So they're also laptops are used. For example, Lenovo ThinkPad. Next portable computer is Netbook. Netbook is a category of small, lightweight and inexpensive computers. They are used by professionals who travel frequently. Now, can you see this? Laptop is we need to keep either on our laps or on the table, right? But Smaller than the laptops, we have netbooks, which are lightweight plus not so expensive. Because with the help of a screen and I get a keyboard also. And it's so small. Can you see in two hands, they have just picked up that particular netbook PC. So it's very useful for the ones who are traveling a lot. Next one is tablet PC. A tablet is a portable touch screen display. Now here, nowadays there are touch screen laptops and netbooks, but tablet if I say it's touch screen by default. Okay. You can perform all the functions on it. They run on different operating systems. For example, iPad, many, many, many uh, different uh, company tablets we are having. Okay. 
so tablets are more portable than the laptop pc and netbook pc they are still more smaller and portable okay for education purpose many of them are using the tablets and there are certain tablets akash and all which are been specially uh, functioned prepared for the students itself okay so these are the three types of portable computers next part is the different types of computers different generation computers okay we saw micro computers now we'll go through mini computer super computer and mainframe computers one by one first we go for mainframe computers mainframe computers can process several million program instructions in a second yes can you see these these are the mainframe computers they have a big capacity of processing okay n number of instructions can you see here million programs can be run just in one second so its the power is very much high large organizations use these room sized systems as they can handle a lot of data what is the size of these mainframe computers room sized such big big processors they have so they are being used by big organizations the organizations which have a lot of data to be dealt with so they prefer going for mainframe computers so that the processing the work what they do is quickly done it is mainly used by insurance companies yes insurance companies have lot of data right the public information what they have the clients what they have the insurance details all those things and that has to be kept for 5 years 10 years many of them are there for 30 years 25 years and so on right so that is a big data they have to maintain so insurance companies go for mainframe computers banks airlines railway reservation systems they all prefer mainframe because lot of calculation and processing has to be done next is mini computers the capacity of the mini computer is between that of a mainframe and a micro computer okay so this is a middle what we can say it is a mid sized computer not much more bigger uh, than mainframe and not as small as micro computer also so it is mini it is used usually fitted within a single cabinet and is about a size of a refrigerator this mainframe was room sized computer but this mini frame is a refrigerator size type it has less memory compared to mainframe mini computers are used to control machines in a manufacturing unit so where these my mini computers are used wherever there are certain factories for manufacturing okay now uh, uh, car spare parts or vehicle spare parts okay they have to manufacture so for that we require large machines to manufacture big big parts okay so over there they use these mini computers so that they can operate all the machines in a proper manner and the work is done fine so that is mini computer mainframe computers they are very large size and very large capacity also processing capacity they can process millions of program just in one second and they are room sized and they are been used by insurance companies bank and all mini computer are mid sized computer smaller than mainframe but bigger than micro computer so it has a single cabinet and that is the size of refrigerator then we have different uh, micro computers used in the manufacturing units next part we will go through 
super computer okay supernova super if we say super something that this super are super than the main frames also super computers are one of the fastest calculating devices ever ever invented so it is like we saw main frame it is doing millions of instructions just in seconds but we'll see about super computer a computer super computer can operate at a speed measured in nanoseconds and even in picoseconds so if we break down seconds we come to nano and again if we break down nanoseconds we come to picoseconds okay so so quick the calculations are done so it is said to be supercomputers it is used for weather forecasting oil exploration weapon research and large scale simulation so wherever large calculations have to be done quickly then they go for supercomputers weather forecasting so in weather i want to check the changes whatever changes are happening quickly so i should be known or i should be alerted about the earthquakes or certain floods or certain something in the wind some changes so those things we need to be informed quickly over there they prefer supercomputers okay then next part is network computers the computers which have low memory less disk storage and a lower processing power why are these uh used now can you see here these are different computers okay but they are in a network they are connected to a big server here now if they have a server who is thinking who is processing then there is no need for them to have uh, other or more disk space because as it is they are storing it in the server so here if i have small sp space it's okay right if i have small uh, or a lower processing power it's okay because the processing is done with the help of a server or a big processing unit is been given right so these network computers are in a network and they are connected to the server or to the cpu or to some other processing unit these computers are designed to connect to the network especially to the internet so only the internet work what is required now just consider these as different bank computers okay uh, if i say state bank so for state bank i have these in different branches okay but the data is on the server itself the data is processed stored retrieved from the server itself so what these are doing they are in a network they are connected to these central parts so what they require what they'll do they'll just fetch the data here and they'll show they'll see they'll search they'll read all the data which is there here so they don't require any special uh, memory space or special storage space or special processing power it's not required okay especially for the internet now they are logged on through the internet only all these branches they are logged on uh, or they are connected through internet with the main branch server okay that is what the network computers next part is the computer system now we come to the computer system we saw hardware and software we saw four functions of the computer system what it does then we came across portable computers then we came across micro computer then mainframe super computer right mini computers then network computers now we are coming to parts of a computer system okay computer system is divided into three parts what are the three parts first is input unit process unit and output unit input unit is connected to the processing unit and processing unit is connected to the output unit input unit consists of devices 
that are used to feed data into the computer. What is the main use of input device? To feed in the data, to type the data into the computer. Keyboard and mouse are the most common input devices. As we all know, keyboard is used for typing and mouse is used for moving and giving the instructions. So both devices are giving in the instructions to the computer. So they are input device. They are signaling in. Keyboard, when I type, the signal is gone in the CPU. When I move the mouse or when I right click or left click the mouse, I am telling the CPU whether I want to select the folder or I want to open the folder by just clicking and double clicking. Right? So the instructions are provided in the CPU. So I call it as input unit. Scanner and digital cameras are other examples. Scanners, what they do? They scan the hard copy which is there outside. And the hard copy as an image, it is stored in the hard disk. So the signals are going inside. And digital cameras, we are taking the cameras and storing the photos in the memory card. Right? So, it's, so the signals are going in. So I call it as input unit. Next is process unit. The processing is done in this unit. The central processing unit, commonly known as CPU, is the most important unit where all the processing work is done. The CPU is the control center of the computer and hence it is said to be the brain of the computer. Okay, The CPU is there as the main important unit for processing. We require CPU for processing as well as controlling. Okay. Controlling the hardware, the application, softwares, everything is being done by process unit or we can call it as a CPU. Next unit is output unit. The output unit consists of devices that are used to give or display an output. Okay, so output unit are the devices by which we get the signals outside. Input unit, what were happening was, what was happening? Keyboard and mouse, the signals were going in. Scanner and digital cameras, the signals were going in. But output unit, the signals will come out. Okay, if we consider monitor, what does monitor do? The files which are stored inside the CPU are shown on the monitor and I can see those files outside, right? So the signals are going from the CPU out to the monitor or if I talk about the printer, then the printer, what it does, the printer is also giving or printing the file which is there in the CPU, okay? I get a hard copy of it outside. So, from CPU, the signals are sent to the printer and that is outside. So, the devices which gives the signal out are known as output unit. The devices which gives the signal in are input and the ones which are processing are inside process unit. So, these are the three main parts or main units of computer system input unit process unit and output unit next the cpu has three main components components are different now what we have seen here is these three comprises of computer system i have these three in one computer okay now, we will just go for CPU. Here, the CPU has three main components again. First part is ALU. Second is control unit. And then the main memory. Okay. The CU or the control unit. Controls and coordinates all the operations taken place in the system. Now, what operations will be there in the system? Saving, 
storing, uh, retrieving or displaying, selecting. These are the kind of operations what we do, typing, right? So if I'm typing something, I will tell the CPU that I have typed my name and that name has to be seen on the monitor. So the signal, what I have typed my name should pass on from the keyboard to the CPU and from CPU to the output unit monitor. Okay, so the signal has to go around every nook and corner. Who is controlling that? The control unit. The control unit will tell the signal that you have to go to the output unit, to the monitor or to the printer or to the memory unit. This is the unit which is controlling all the systems, all the signals. It controls the flow of data and instructions from one unit to another. From input unit, it goes on to the CPU and then it goes on to the output unit. Now, if I have to do certain calculation, then comes the ALU. This part of CPU performs all the arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, division on the numerical data as directed by the control unit. Okay. The control unit will be directing. Now, if I want, I am just typing my name. So, there is no need for any calculation. So, control unit will send that signal to the monitor to show me. But if I say 5 plus 2, I want the answer. 5 plus 2, I gave the calculation. So, the control unit will take that signal and give it to ALU. Because he is the one who knows to calculate. Right? So, 5 plus 2. This ALU will calculate and give me the answer as 7. That 7 is then given to control unit. Control unit will take that signal of 7 and it will show it on the desktop or on the monitor. Okay. So, likewise the control unit is working and the ALU is used for calculation purpose only. Next comes the memory unit. All necessary softwares and data need to be stored in the computer. Right or wrong? It's right. The data is to be stored in the computer because we require that data later so we have to store it. This data is stored in the memory unit of the CPU. CPU is having one memory unit. So here the data is stored. Computer memory is measured in bit, byte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte and terabyte. We have different measuring units what we can say it as for measuring the memory. Okay. Next is here we have different uh, units by which we can measure the computer memory. Okay. 8 bits. Now, what do you mean by bit? Bit is a trigger of 1 and 0. On, off. If I say on, it is 1. Off, it is 0. Okay. So, a combination of 1 and zeros. If I have 8 bits, bit can be 0 or 1. This is the 1 bit. This can be 1 bit. 1 bit, 1 bit. And so, if I calculate, I have a collection of 8 bits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I have a collection of 8 bits that becomes 1 byte. Okay. Now, I can term the full range of numbers as 1 byte. Then, we have 1024. If I have a collection of 1024 bytes, it will calculate it as 1 kilobyte. If I have 1024 kilobytes, it will be 1 megabyte. I have 1024 megabyte, then I will have 1 terabyte. But if I have 102 gigabytes, okay, then it comes the terabyte, okay. Here, the same thing is given, but after terabyte, gigabyte, I have petabyte, exabyte, zettabyte and yottabyte. So many different variation units are there. Next part is inside the CPU. Now we saw three main parts of 
CPU, what were the three main parts? ALU, CU and memory units. These were the three main parts of the CPU. Now, again still more inside we will go. Can you see here the CPU? It has lots and lots of parts here. Can you see? This unit is filled up with the data cables, with different cables, with wires, with fan, with processor, all those things. Okay, so we'll just one by one, we'll see the main parts of the CPU. The main components inside the CPU are as follows. First is the motherboard. The motherboard or main board is the backbone of the computer. The motherboard consists of, it's the backbone of the computer. Okay, now on the motherboard, what all things are there? On the motherboard, first is processor chip, PCI slots, memory unit. Now what do you mean by processor chip? This is the chip that does the thinking and processing for the computer. We have Intel chips, right? We have Intel processing chips, i5, i7, i10 and so on. So those are the thinking and processing units for the computer, okay? So this is being a uh, stick on the motherboard. Next part is PCI slots. What do you mean by PCI slots? PCI slots are the outlets in the motherboard that allow you to install an extra component like either a sound card, modem, video card and other devices or other cards such as graphic cards, TV toner cards. Okay, you have different cards which you can fit inside these PCI slots. Can you see here? PCI slots are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So in this, I can fix these cards. Okay? Sound card, video card, graphic cards. If you want to play certain games with high quality, then you have to have your graphic cards installed. Okay? So you can do that with the help of PCI slots. Then we have memory unit or primary memory or RAM, random access memory. In the memory unit where data and information are temporarily stored for processing. Now what do you mean by this is if I say uh, 42 plus 43. Okay, so if I do this calculation, first I store it in my brain. And then I calculate it and give the answer. After I give the answer, I forget about that. Right? So the numbers vanish out from my memory. That is the RAM. RAM is the temporary memory. Just for processing uh, time, the memory is used. After that, the memory is cleaned and clear back again. Okay? Here it is the volatile memory which gets cleared as soon as computers is switched off. Computer is switched off. The data what is there into the memory is vanished. So it is said to be volatile memory. Okay. Next memory unit. There are certain memory units or primary units called RAM. Now, many a times what happens is our computer process is very slow. At that time, many people suggest us to increase the RAM. Okay. So, these are the RAM sheets what we have. Okay. The RAM uh, cards what we can say. We need to put these into the PCI slots. Okay, and we need to increase the size if it is 4, if it is 120 and so on. Okay, as much size you want, we are writing. Okay, we can use those for our typing and processing. Next is hard disk drive. Hard disk drive or secondary memory, we can say it as. 
it is the part of the computer where an information is stored okay for storing the information for a longer time i require a hard disk now the data what i am storing in the hard disk should not be deleted right so all the information that you access on the computer all the documents pictures email messages and programs are saved in the hard disk drive your c drive d drive and so on unlike ram hdd does not store information temporarily so it is there for later retrieval also okay the data is stored in this unless and until the hard disk gets corrupt next is dvd rom or drive this drive allows you to access the data stored on a cd or a dvd yes can you see a cd which has been put inside data can also be written or modified or erased with the help of the drive not only i can retrieve but i can store the data on the cd or i can um, use the dvd or cds for just uh, viewing i have many movie series okay so with the help of this dvd rom drive i can open the cd or dvd yes students are these concepts clear to you all i hope the lesson is understood and thanks for watching now uh, i will be providing you with the notes you need to write the question answers in the 100 pages notebook thank you